today, Pat? Mobbury. And why are we here? Mobbury is about 12 miles from Plymouth, and two events happened here in the Civil War that had great significance for Plymouth. I know it sounds odd, but it, it's true. In 1642, at the beginning, for, the, for Plymouth, the beginning of the Civil War, Sir Rolf Hopton took his Cornish army of around 4,500 men and marched east, crossed the Tamar, despite his men not wanting to, because these soldiers fought for Cornwall only. He persuaded them to march into Devon and blockade Plymouth at Plimpton. He occupied Plimpton and blockaded Plymouth from the other side of the Plym. To the Royalists in the South Hams, although Devon was predominantly parli uh, parliamentarian, a lot of the nobility in this area, in the South Hams, sided with the King. So Hopton's occupation of Plimpton with a strong army gave the local Royalists here chance to call a, call a meeting of all their soldiers, gather a posse in, Pl in Mobbury. So they brought all their retainers and the locals together at Mobbury in December 1642. The nobility didn't know what to do with this mass of men. There were about 1,500 to 2,000 altogether. They're, they came for a good time. They were drinking, they were eating. They, were, they weren't trained soldiers. In Plymouth, this worried the high command. So they had a meeting late in the night of December the 6th. The mayor of Plymouth, Colonel William Ruthven, and Colonel Alexander Carew, Sir Alexander Carew, and other officers planned what to do. How can we break up this? Because if these royalists organized, they could reinforce Hopton and invest Plymouth closer. They could move north of Plymouth and s tighten their grip on Plymouth. So they decided on to make a raid. That night, Colonel William Ruthven led between three and 500 horse and dragoons out of Plymouth, but he couldn't go directly east. He couldn't go through Plimpton. He decided to go north, where the Royalist outposts were few and far between. So he rode north of Plymouth, out towards Shaw, came over the moors via Ivy Bridge, and by just after dawn on December the 7th, the morning, his men reached the high ground above Mobbury. The Royalists were just waking up. Their leaders were having a meeting at the Champernow mansion, deciding what to do. They were in a council of war. Sir Rolf Hopton was here the day before, and some of his leading generals to, to sort of coerce the, the Devon Royalists and tell them what, what, what we're going to do when they you know, get together, we're going to bring them to Plymouth. But Hopton left, leaving the Devon Royalists in the house themselves. At this time, someone gave a warning that the parliamentarians were above them, roundhead horse. These men, Ruthven led his men down the hill, scattered the posse in no time. These men were untrained soldiers. So you've got 1,500 men scattering in all directions. There's a place over there just behind this church called Runaway Lane. Now, although they, it is more significant with the second battle of Mobbury, I believe a lot of soldiers fled down that way and it had the name by then. It was called Runaway Lane shortly after this fight rather than the second fight because the second battle was more organized. These men fled. The leaders of the, of the Devon Posse, the, or the, the nobility, blockaded themselves in the Champernome Mansion, which is just to the north of this church. How far away is it, Phil? Two minutes walk. Close. The Champernome Mansion was very close, near the old priory. Um, <clears throat> it was the home of Sir Henry Champernome, a royalist. And in the house were Sir Henry, there was Edmund Fortescue of Berry Pomeroy, his son, Edward, uh, the, high, the Sheriff of Devon, Sir, John, John Fortescue, these men and a lot of other officers were blockaded themselves in this house. When the posse scattered, a lot of the Plymouth soldiers took to plundering. They came to this church, St George's Church behind me, and attacked the church, ransacking it and damaging the effigies inside to the, old, uh, the dead of the Champagne family, because they did not like royalists at all. And any church belonging to the royalists, they would sort of ransack. Then they besieged the house. Ruthven decided not to launch an attack against the house because it was too well defended and he would lose a lot of men. So he set fire to the outbuildings. Now these outbuildings caught the light pretty quick and they, the flames moved towards the house because it wasn't a big house. I think it was known as Manor Court in those days. And the Royalists inside gave up. I mean, they feared they were going to be burned to death. So they surrendered to Ruthven. Um, Ruthven gathered his men together collected the prisoners, and this great bag of prisoners were then marched to Dartmouth, 
that's uh, Captain Thomas Drake and current um, Captain William Gould were involved in this. Captain William Gould went on to become Governor of Plymouth later. <coughs> another man called Thompson, George Thompson was another cavalry commander here. These men took the, troop, took the prisoners to Dartmouth and sent them to London. These were then dispersed to several different prisons. There's, there's the one in Southwark, there's the King's Bench and Winchester House. They were split up so they couldn't plot together. Um, Edmund Fortescue was in Windsor Castle, was kept there for a while, and there, is, there was a, a, a bit of graffiti on the window, one of the windows at Windsor, Windsor, um, Win Windsor, Windsor, that said, Edmund Fortescue, prisoner here, December 1642, so we know exactly where he was. Um, the, men of, the Plymouth men then rode back to Plymouth, well, they, rode, they went to Dartmouth, like I said, and then they took ship back to Plymouth. And that was the end of the first. This raid was, although it was small, it was the most significant raid because after this, Hopton knew that he only, with only four and a half thousand men, he couldn't really stay around Plymouth. So he withdrew and decided to attack Exeter, which failed also. But more of that in the second video. Thank you very much. How was that, Steve? Oh. That was